This is News Conference Extra with Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to News Conference Extra, a special segment of Today in L.A. Weekend. With us, Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Press, which airs every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Chuck, lots to talk about. We have to start, though, with the junior senator from California, Kamala Harris. We don't want to go into all the post-mortems, although uh, it should be pointed out there were several pre-mortems prior to her getting out of the race. New York Times, Washington Post, Politico. Unbelievable to have that many members of her staff or former members leaking to those uh, news organizations. But the question we a lot of people have is, by getting out now, she saves herself from some embarrassment in California, but does she save herself as a potential vice presidential running mate? Well, I think that's the exact reason why she got out when she got out. I think that um, getting out before the calendar turned to 2020 um, helps her not dig a deeper hole in California politics, that, that, as you just pointed out. But I think it preserves... It, it sort of allows her to turn a page in 2020. And I actually think she has an incredible opportunity to showcase what was her best asset when she started her campaign, right? Her, her, her prosecutorial skills as a questioner. Certainly, she had some great viral moments at hearings, whether at the Supreme Court hearings or, or with Bill Barr. And lo and behold, we may have a Senate trial where senators themselves have to, have to ask the questions of witnesses. So. I do think she actually gets a an early, quick opportunity to repair her sort of or, or, her political resume a bit here a little bit um, on that front. Look, I, I still you know I still think the idea of a Democratic ticket that is too coastal. I've always thought that Kamala Harris the, 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 she there, she brought one big negative with her as a potential running mate, and that is the San Francisco baggage. And I say that in that fair or unfair. There is a stereotype of San Francisco Democrat to, to places, to people in Iowa, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, and that, you know, that isn't always uh, seen as a compliment. Um, and there is this perception the Democratic Party is a bit coastal and things like that. So I've always thought the running, I still think that we, we have a better idea of who the running mate's going to be already, and that I think Stacey Abrams, uh, the unsuccessful candidate for governor of Georgia from 2018, um, is sitting there as the most likely running mate for, frankly, a, uh, any of the top five candidates at this point. You made the point, though, that part of the your observation, and I think there's merit to this, was that Kamala Harris really never had a reason for running for president other than yeah. the fact that she could run for president and had a pretty good chance of winning the nomination. It, she struck, there was always two things about her. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a student of, I like to obsess over what it is that drives people to run for president and the successful ones and the unsuccessful ones. And it's pretty clear pattern of the star candidates over the years that have been unsuccessful. They have all had one thing in common. They were talked into running for president and they, it wasn't that it wasn't their ambition. Uh, and the different the successful presidents, presidential candidacies, the candidate themselves was the driving force. Uh, Kamala Harris reminded me a bit of the John Glenn campaign of of '84, if you will. It was an, on paper. Why wouldn't John Glenn make perfect sense? Senator from Ohio, American hero, uh, and it, he didn't have a compel. He didn't know why he wanted to be president. And I think that I don't think Kamala Harris ever answered that question. She ran because she she thought she had a whole bunch of people tell her, you can build the coalition Democrats needed to beat Donald Trump. You should do this. It's very similar to what happened to Beto O'Rourke. He got talked into running because somebody presented him with a tactical game plan that showed him, look, this could actually happen. You don't get this opportunity very often. I look at Kamala Harris, the first office she ever ran for was San Francisco DA. That tells me this is someone that loves the law. This is someone that, 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 that maybe whose ambition was Attorney General or Supreme Court. It's not somebody who I think dreamed of running for president her whole life. Let's talk very quickly about uh, the impeachment process. What is the risk that Nancy Pelosi is taking here? Now, we know there are four Democrats who are in Orange County seats in 2018 mm -hmm. were occupied by Republicans. Those congressional seats went for Hillary Clinton. But there are plenty of other Democrats who are sitting in seats where Donald Trump did well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it's sort of it's too late to have that conversation, right? I think they're already in. I think the fact they did the inquiry, I, I, I don't see that there's, that there's any, you know, suddenly, you know, I mean, there, there's going to be risk here. We're a polarized country, and it's pretty clear that, that, that you know, there's, there's no give on, on either side. I do think, though, 
here's what I do expect to happen. Um, Conan, is I do think Democrats are going to have four or five articles of impeachment that they do not expect all four or five articles to make it through this to the Senate. Like, I, I imagine you will see four or five articles and you'll see some of those Orange County Democrats maybe vote for two of them, but not all four. Uh, we had that during the Clinton impeachment, if you recall, and I'm going to, uh, where you had four, I think, articles that they put onto the floor and I think two got voted out. And so you, and you had some Republican members who were sitting in some swing seats who then, you know, waffled on that. So I think that's how they're going to try to protect these swing district members. And very quickly, who's on the program? Uh, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler and Republican Senator Ted Cruz. Chuck Todd, host to Meet the Press, 8 o'clock Sunday morning, the best part of Sunday mornings. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate it. NBC4's news conference at 9 o'clock, unfortunately preempted this week by NBC Sports. We will be back at that hour, though, next Sunday. I'm Conan Eldon. Have a great day.